everybody and welcome to Hello Nigeria. My name is Olive Emody and I'm very excited to be here. How was your weekend? Did you have a good time? Did you have a good day? Well, it's good news in Port Harcourt for some people, most especially those who are members of the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria. They have actually, the INEC has finally concluded results of the rerun elections that ought to have taken place since last year, but finally took place. But there's been mixed reactions concerning this as some people are not in support of the result. We're talking about this and lots more when we talk about our trending stories. But still, today to come, we'll be looking at a very important topic, the new foreign exchange policy. There's been so much optimism expressed by many people as to the impact of the new foreign exchange policy on the parallel market. We'll be looking at this with Ibn Abba Prinsloo. She's a financial expert and she'll come and break it down to us in layman's terms. Thank you for watching. Hello, Nigeria. Please stay with us. Hello, you're very welcome. Again, it's, an, it's, it's a delight to be with you here this beautiful Monday afternoon. Hope your weekend was great. My name is Aya Thompson. Now, talking about trending stories, we're going to be looking at the fact that the Standards Organization of Nigeria has shut down a 5 billion naira warehouse of substandard tires in Lagos. We're looking at that story and others. In addition to that, it's a Monday, and you know what happens on Monday? We bring the sports guru in-house. It's Namdi Ekuba, and we'll be looking at the EFL that took place only over the weekend and how Manchester United came out tops again. That and many other stories on sports this afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, the, full, the show starts in full swing. Olive and I are your captains for this afternoon. Stay tuned. All right, you're welcome back, and this is still Hello Nigeria. I am Tom Stain, myself, and Olive, and Modi taking you through today. What's going on today, actually? Did right. we plan it? It's like a black and red set. I'm wearing red. Okay, I'm not wearing black here, but yeah, my outfit is black and red. You are wearing black and red. Our chairs are black and red. Yeah, we planned it. We, we planned are, it because we are, the winger is not around. <laughs> it is, it is uh, what's it called? It's our mind, our minds are aligned. Yeah. So whether when we do it or we don't do it, because we've worked together for so long, you know, we start to think alike. You know, they said that married couples or couples who have been married for a very long time start to look alike, start to, look alike, start to think alike, start to act alike. You true. know, you see behavioral traits in both of them. And it's so true. Even people who work together also, you know, um, start to look alike. I can't count the number of times like, oh, you and Olive look alike, you sound alike. You know, so it happens like that. Yes, indeed, it does happen. Now, let's talk about Mondays. A lot of people come to work with the Monday blue, the Monday blue mindset. People hate Mondays. People mm. love Fridays because they think, oh, Friday. But the truth is, on Fridays, at the end of the day, there are still people who work on weekends. But yep. even people that work on weekends still love Fridays. But on Mondays, people come to work with a little bit of a mellow or uh, a subdued mind because they just think, oh, I haven't slept enough. Because it took away to the end. fun from them. Like blah, 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 after, blah. after you've been resting a week, over the weekend or just having your own time because you might not be resting, but at least it is your time, your own, your own mm. boss. Then you come to work on Monday, go back to routine. And human beings are not, um, they don't, we don't really we like, don't routine. like routine. Yes, we don't like the fact that you have to do certain things at a certain time. You have to be told what to do and you're doing it because really you don't have a choice. Okay, now if you're in that category, you're thinking to yourself, I hate that I have to go to work on Monday morning. I hate my job. I hate what I do. I hate myself. myself. We thought that maybe when you watch this video, you'd be encouraged. And you know that you are the only person who can encourage yourself and motivate yourself. We can try our best to motivate you on TV, but it will never be enough if you cannot look within and find encouragement for yourself. We're hoping that this very young boy will be able to speak some sense to you and to me. Enjoy. Outside motivation is good, but what's mostly important is you trying to motivate yourself. Yes, you can go on different motivational sites. Yes, you can look at different pe different motivational speakers. They can say some positive things and things that can uplift you, but what matters most is your decision. You decide your life, so you can either choose to sit down or stand up and speak out against something. So obviously, the only the only motivation important is your motivation. So when so when you're ready, when the time comes for you, you motivate yourself on how to get up. You motivate yourself on what you want to do and how you're going to do it. See, yes, 
I look at different motivational speakers. I look at positive people in history. But yes, those people matter. Those people are important. But I had to make the decision to do this right now. So I got I got out of my seat and I make and I made things happen. And that's exactly what you need to do. All right, make things happen for yourself. Very, Very true, true indeed. So it's it's really really something that's up to you. There's so much that people you watch on TV or motivational speakers can do for you. Very important to listen to these people because sometimes people need a reminder. But on the days when there are no motivational speakers, no family or friends around to motivate you, it's important that we know that all the decision well, lies yeah. within you. The yeah. choice to stand up, the choice to pursue your dreams, it is something you have to make for yourself. February is already ended. There are people who had tomorrow dreams. February. Exactly. February is ending tomorrow. There are people who had plans for 2017. Your pastor told you in church 2017 is your year. In fact, you knew 2017 is your year. And this is not just a message to you. I'm indirectly speaking to myself. There are things that we've outlined that we want to achieve over the course of the year for the first quarter. Some of us have not even gone halfway. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that from today, we would wake up and not start looking for the many excuses because the truth is, there will always be excuses why you cannot achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah. But you will look beyond the excuses. You will motivate yourself and you will start something. Take a step. When you take a step, one step a day at a time before you realize, before you know it, you've actually achieved what it is that you want to achieve. Yes, With these few right. words of ours, we hope that we've been able to convince and not confuse you that motivation lies within you. You want to say something, Ayo? Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, going back to the Monday question, that some people wake up and they just hate Monday. And um, talking about you can do this, you know, like what we said, sometimes you don't wait for someone to tell you what you can do. Sometimes you don't wait for the circumstances to be right. You just have to make the best of the situation you find yourself. Mm -hmm. There's no point beating yourself up that, oh my goodness, it's another Monday, I have to wake up and go to work, or it's another day, I don't really enjoy what I'm doing. You can tell yourself whether it's a temporary thing, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I will go out there, I will excel, irrespective of what I've been given to do. I'll make up my mind to excel. Don't wait for someone to tell you. Tell yourself that. Very true indeed. And on that note, we'll go on a break. When we come back, I and I will be taking you through the trending stories in Nigeria. Please stay with us. All right, you're welcome back. And it's time for us to look at today's trending stories. Now, a lot of things happened over the weekend and we're just only able to touch on a few. Now, mm -hmm. one that definitely came to our attention is the fact that the Standards Organization of Nigeria has um, shut down the 5 billion Naira substandard tires warehouse in Lagos. Now, two Chinese men are to be prosecuted for their involvement mm -hmm. in the importation of fake and substandard tires worth 5 billion naira into the country. Their names, Messias Tao Long, Shen Anju, Zheng Yao, were arrested and their company, Sino Nigeria Import and Export <coughs> Limited <coughs> Warehouse in Lagos, sealed by the Standards Organization of now, Nigeria. Now, the Director General of Son, Osita Aboloma, who showed reports around the warehouse at the Keja area on Badagri Road in Lagos at the weekend, lamented that the importation of such tires endangered the lives of million Nigerians. He mm. said many of three Many of the over 3 million tires brought into the country in over 60 containers had post-dated manufacturing dates. Some of them which with a March 2017 date on them. This is so sad, I Yes, it is. To think that we're in Nigeria, we're complaining every now and then. There are people who are having accidents on the road. People are dying. Lives are being endangered. Yes. And we're realizing the tons, the numbers, the millions of tires that are being imported and they have fake manufacturing dates. Yes. I mean, I, I, according to um, the reports that came our way, they had they had cloned different sizes of tires. So not just did they fake the, no, the dates of expiry, their dates of expiry, but even faked some big names like Powertrack, Aptony, Harmony, Dura, Duraturn, BLA, City Tour, and so many others. Now, <coughs> a lot of people will go to the market thinking that they are going to buy you know, mm. um, the real deal and understand that this is quality, you're paying for quality. And you wonder why your tires are getting, you know, spoiled easily, you're getting accidents. It's just, it just, just goes to show. And this goes across different sectors in yes. Nigeria, beyond tires. You know, we have fake drugs, we have... The um, fake drugs one, I've actually experienced it. A yes. certain colleague went to a hospital, a certain well-known hospital, 
she got drugs and we noticed that on the manufacturing dates and the expiry dates, I beg your pardon, they had cancelled it and they had written another expiry date with the pen. I took a picture of it and I told her to follow up with it. I, I When I heard of um, Eric's case, I felt so bad that I didn't ask her if That's she followed Eric, up with I, it. I yes, it. I would buy it. Because I heard that he also had a collapse, his mm. kidney collapsed because he took expired drugs. Yeah. So when I heard that, I felt so bad I didn't follow up with that because it was a well-known hospital. And regardless of whether it's well-known or not, you should not sell drugs. You should sell no expired thing. You might think, oh, it's just tires. Yeah. But those are the tires that people drive every day to work. These are the tires that people would have. Someone would be driving on said Milan Bridge. I'll be stranded at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. I have nothing and no one to help them. And then who'd love to take advantage of the situation? Yeah. So there are tons and tons of disadvantages that come in with this. Um, the Director General of Sun cautioned users of automobile tires on the need to be extra cautious when buying products. He said that the nation's laws must be made to work by ensuring that it is implemented to the letter. Now, the issue is, how do we get to know the real ones? Yes. How do we get to know the original ones? That's another major issue. I must have. say kudos to the to SON for the work they're doing. Because at the end of the day, like you mentioned, except we're all going to magnify, we, all of us can be detectives, mm -hmm. and that's why we have bodies and organizations <coughs> like this to help us out where we are, you know, where we have an issue. So it's really mm -hmm. encouraging, and it builds the faith of Nigerians that people like the SON are doing the work they're supposed to do as regulatory bodies. And I'm really happy with what they have done. They on discovering this place, they said the, a lot of illicit activities took place. They are relabeling high level of stuffing of tires into one, mm. tampering with expiry dates, and staking the tires in very adverse conditions. Now, it's important to note that there are certain products that need not be kept in certain ways. It's why when you buy a drug, they will tell you, um, store in a place. cool place, do not keep it low certain degree. So there's, I'm sure there's also a mode in which tires should be yes. preserved. And these people don't adhere to it, which is why the tires would not last long. And a lot of these um, products that were recovered were burned. So I'm, I'm really excited that we, we don't have to be afraid that, although some have already gotten into the market, I may not be able to be recalled. But that these people will be tried, and I hope that they will yes, be used as scapegoats. It's so sad. It's not even Nigerians. Not Nigerians that are perpetrating this. And of course, they are working with Nigerians to do this. I pray that. I'm hoping that more people who are involved in this will be getting more scapegoats, yes. and they will serve as a deterrent to others. We move over to our next story. INEC in River State. Finally, elections election results has been concluded. INEC declares PDP the winner of the rerun elections in River State. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has declared candidates of PDP winners in Saturday's rerun elections for the Eche Omuma Federal Constituency seat and Eche State Constituency the second seat. Um, mm -hmm. Professor Shola Omotola, who announced the results of this, said that PDP had 15,221 votes, while APC polled 6,220 votes and declared Mr. Jeremy A.K. winner. Now, the issue with this is, if we follow the story of these legislative yeah. seats, they have been in contention from, for a long time now. Yeah. Even as at 2010, on the 10th of December, they did another election that they declared that was marred by irregularities and then shifted the elections. And even this one that they have done is still in contest. Mm -hmm. APC has advised that they do not, that INEC does not announce the results. There is no INEC that is supposed to announce. It is a returning officer that is supposed to announce. Mm -hmm. But what the only, the major issue I have with this is that the governor of River State went to do yes, Thanksgiving. On yes, on Wiki. Yeah. He went to do Thanksgiving in a church. And I'm going to read um, what he said. He's, he, according to the Vanguard newspaper, Wiki boasted that the state was firmly in PDP's PDP. grip, okay. adding that whenever free and fair election was conducted, his party would win. They should forget about the state. No matter the level of security force, they cannot snatch River State. Whenever a free and fair election is conducted, PDP will win. There is no other party here in River State, he said. Yeah, well, of course he would say that because he is a member of the PDP. If you were an APC or state, um, gov governed state, mm. the APC governor will probably say the same. Now he's mentioned that. that wasn't mo I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it was very modest of him. As a governor, you're in power. You're not just... Um, but he's a politician as well. Yes, you are, but you are the governor. You're supposed to be the governor over PDP, the governor over APC. No, but you, much can, as but you APC, can be partisan, though. Yes, you, but it was, I, I felt it was just too much. Most the, the kind of statements he said were too strong. I would mm. think that, you should, as a governor, you shouldn't come out to say, oh, there's no other party. PDP is a party. That's politics. It's just like was, boxing, where people come and say, I'm going to finish him up. It's politics. It's political and talk. And too petty. 
that's it. They, they will talk. I mean, they say things like that. We've heard, um, you know, them throw jabs. It, it's what, in a way, makes politics an interesting um, space. You know, you have people coming. It's just like boxing. Part of boxing is not just a physical fight. It's also mm. the whole, you know, talk and there's, I'm going to finish him. I'm going to kill him, and people are excited. So obviously he would. He's not. But not boxers do not have people that are putting their trust in them and hoping that they will make decisions not based on. Or, or, or on party influence and oh, yeah, make decisions that are for the best interest of other people. No, but you vote the man because of his party. So your party has a mandate. And so you, politicians have to, uh, they're partisan. They're we need to learn how to be, how to have the spirit of sportsmanship, basically, and not, not try politics. to rub it in people's faces. Now, APC has further gone to say something. They, APC are attacking the result. They're saying that it is pertinent to remind INEC that in line with the relevant section of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended, it is only the returning officers that are empowered to announce results of the elections and not the National Electoral Commissioner, the resident Electoral Commissioner or any other. The APC, APC strongly urges INEC not to go ahead to declare the results for elections that it had earlier announced as inconclusive, as this will signpost a gross violation of its own rules and demonstrate the height of inconsistency and illegality on the part of INEC. It we therefore be urge to. them to conclude it. Um, conclu to conclude elections before declaring the results. It would be good to investigate if this happened in their states as well. Yes. So if it happened and they complain, of course, it's everyone will have something to say. If they're right, of course, they have a right to, to say yes. that the returning officer should be the one to announce. Whether he's announcing or not, if they've conducted a free and fair election, it has been investigated, INEC, who is the body responsible for elections, have said, this is our winner, then it's just noise. They will mm -hmm. make a lot of noise by the end of the and day. And then they'll calm down, they accept it. it. Yeah, state accept has it. been one major state that's had a lot of issues when it comes to elections, yes. by the way. Yes. But we were thankful that it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't as crazy as it usually was, although they, some violence was reported. Yes, it was. Yes. And of course, it's because of the history of River State and the previous administration and the previous governor, um, power being transferred, and you know so that's why it's um it's that um tumultuous all right moving away from that and heading on to our final story for this afternoon alleged diarrhea outbreak health ministry to investigate cause of death of two students now according to reports reaching us the minister of health professor isaac adewoli has called on the parents and students of the Queen's College, Yaba, Lagos, and concerned Nigerians to remain calm as he has directed the Lagos State Ministry of Health, Community Health, and the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Luth, to investigate and unravel the causes of death of two students of the school. Now, this is very scary to think that, I know we had a cholera outbreak last year, but it didn't last for long. After a while, the papers were not reporting them as much. So we need to be a lot, we need to sensitize people as much as possible. People need to be hygiene conscious. People need to wash their hands. People need to be sure of what they eat. For those who eat outside, you need to be sure of where you're buying your food from. Because the truth is you can guarantee what you made by yourself. You cannot guarantee what outside, they make outside. Yes. You can't guarantee the, the utensils and how neat they are. I know Mama Put is very sweet, but if it is confirmed that we're having a cholera outbreak, people might need to calm down first of all on the Mama Put food mm. because we can't guarantee um, how clean or how neat the environment is. I'm glad that um, after two, I mean, I, I'm, it's unfortunate that the two students lost their lives, but I'm glad at the response of the Minister of Health to this and not taking it lightly. You know, you're not waiting for a, a large number of deaths before you now say, okay, actually, we might just have a problem with diarrhea or a diarrhea outbreak, you know, very soon in Lagos State or in Nigeria. I hope that investigations will come out quickly so that people will understand, like you mentioned, you know, but again, prevention is better than cure. It's better to air on the side of caution True. so if you if, i mean since it's under investigation just be careful wash it's your important. hands wash your fruits very well before you eat them yeah. anything you know that is entering into your mouth be very very hygiene conscious and if you notice any sign and symptoms if you notice you're stooling a little too often quickly report to the hospital so that investigation can be done. It's better for them to check and find nothing than for you to self-medicate and then later realize that it was cholera and it's gone out of proportion. But that's all we have for you on our training stories. We'll go on a very quick break now. When we come back, it'll be time for us to discuss the new Central Bank of Nigeria's Forex policy. How has it in, fa um, in fact affected our Naira and what are the ups and the downs? We'll look at it with Ibn Abba Prince Will in a moment.
All right, you're welcome back. And like we mentioned earlier on, we're going to be looking at the foreign exchange policy, particularly as it stands today in Nigeria. Now, to speak with us about this, we have an expert, financial expert. She's not, she's no stranger to Hello Nigeria. She's been with us before, and she has a, an intelligent way of breaking it down in lay month terms. In case you're just tuning in, this is Hello Nigeria. You're very welcome. All right, with us in the studio, we have Ibinabo. Okay, they call Ibinabo Princeville. You almost called that Ibinabo Fibre. Yes, I would say, because we've been saying that name. Ibinabo Princeville is with us in the studio this afternoon, and I cannot wait. We've already started chatting about the, you know, interbank rate, the parallel markets, round tripping, yeah. so many things. Now, one of the big stories over the past last few days is the fall in terms of the rate of the dollar to the Naira. What, has, what is responsible for that? I think that's the first question I'd like to ask because a lot of Nigerians are happy, but yeah. they don't know if they should be happy yet in yeah. case it's just a fluke, fluke and then yeah. it will go back up again. So what is responsible for this and would it last? Okay, now the first half of it, what's responsible is just supply. Like we all know, demand and supply has a way of creating like um, price discovery. If the supply outstrips demand, prices will fall. If demand outstrips supply, prices will rise. So what the CBN did was, when they saw the, the pressure, the power market was getting very heated, and it was encouraging a lot of round tripping, because people find their way around getting sourcing for the dollars from the interbank market, and then they just go right ahead and sell it at the black market, mm. and just you know gain that spread, which is huge. It's over 100 Naira spread. So basically, the CBN said, you know what? Let us supply a bit of you know, FX into the interbank market to sort of reduce that pressure. And then when people, when the information got out on the streets that CBN was going to supply, those who were hoarding the dollars were now also pouring it into the parallel mm. market. So whilst the rate at the interbank market was softening, the rate at the parallel market too began to reduce. So the Naira firmed up. So it's not so much about um, a long-term response to the current issues that we're facing. It was just like an immediate reaction from the CBN to try to um, stem the continuous slide in our, in our local currency. Right. Now, whether or not we can sustain that has to do with the source of this foreign exchange yes. FX. Yes. You know, basically, we want to believe that we're diversifying our economy mm. and all that, but our revenue base is still predominantly funded mm. by oil receipts. Now, we're at a point where oil prices are stable above $50. Reserves have increased to about $30 billion from dropping from a little below $24 billion. So the CBN has a little bit of room to create price stability. That's one of the functions of the CBN. They're allowed to use part of reserves to sort of pump into the uh, market and then um, so, um, defend the local currency. So that's what they did last week. I hear they put out uh, uh, as much as $500 uh, million dollars into yeah. the market. So that's, that's going to reduce the um, pressure on the Naira. But long term, how are they going to sustain yeah. the intervention? Because you still get your, your um, inflows from oil. So if anything happens to oil prices, if there's any slight oh. volatility, you would be unable to carry on with this interven intervention. And the demand for FX is so high. So for me, I would say that uh, the likelihood of sustaining this over a long period is not there. Okay, so now CBN pumped about $500 million into the, into system, the, into the system so that certain banks could trade mm -hmm. and could get FX. Do you think that this was something that should have been done long ago? Some people think this should have been done long ago. Why now? Or is it a timely intervention? For me, I would say some of the decisions that the CBN, you know, eventually gets around to taking are a bit late in the day. Mm. Like last year, when we had talk of liberalizing the FX market and all, I was on the show to have that discussion. Sometime last year, I think June last year, yeah. when the whole issue of, you know, liberalizing the market, allowing forces of demand and supply to set prices, everybody was sort of happy. Short term, there was that fear that rates could go up and then... After a while, it would surely find its balance. That's why demand and supply is better at these things than that invisible hand that keeps managing um, things from the outside. So we actually felt that on paper, last year, the decision the CBN took was the right decision, but it was belated. Mm. We had gone through so much shocks for the system 
in like 18 months, inflation was trending upwards to the point where like people could barely buy some of the goods um, in the market. For me personally, I know how much adjustments I've had to make in my personal life and in the um, products that I have to go out and purchase just because of the, the problem of inflation. Yeah. The prices of your average day-to-day -day goods are so high. So I think the CBN is not very um, proactive in the way decisions are taken. The issue of the slide in all prices, we had dealt with this from 2014. We knew about it. It yeah. started in 2014. So you would want to be forward-looking in the decisions you take. You sit down and you say, okay, this is the pressure we have now. We don't have reserves to support the Naira. What do we do? And you take those decisions in a timely manner. Yeah. But we didn't do that. We waited. And then last year, June, you came out with you know, a very good, on paper, a very good strategy on how you were going to address the issue of foreign exchange management. But implementation, the, it always suffers from implementation problems, mm. which is what we saw. And then after a while, the CBN still came back into the market trying to set the price, mm. trying to do all sorts. So for us, it's like, okay, so what are we really doing? So it was actually a managed float as of last year, June. So now the, the pressure is so high. CBN has come in again to intervene. Yeah. So we want to know what are we doing? What's your decision on this issue? Are we going to allow the market forces to determine, determine the prices price. or are we in a managed float regime so mm. that investors are clear on what the position is? It helps them plan. Right. The reason we've not seen a lot of inflows from outside is because of this high level of uncertainty mm. as to the management of um, foreign exchange in Nigeria. Now, the, the, the last week, Monday, February 20, to be precise, um, the new policy was um, was introduced by the CBN in order to control or to manage um, the rising, um, the, the, the discrepancy in terms of the rising or the falling of, of, the, the, of the Naira. Now, some of them, I, I I'll read some of it out so people okay. can understand. The policy is directed at the retail end of the market where the scarcity is worst. Worst. This is the market that used to be served by the Bureau de Change. Mm -hmm. So number one, what's the impact on BDCs at the moment? And um, would they, because I know that in the past with the previous policies, they weren't too happy with it because they felt that the CBN was going to be taking um, away market business. business from them. Mm -hmm. Also, the new Forex policy aims to ensure supply of dollars for personal and business travel allowances for those who need to travel on holiday or yeah. business. Again, a lot of people complain about this. Indeed, a number of people had to withdraw their children from foreign yes. institutions because they didn't have enough money to actually pay. Yeah. It wasn't that they didn't have the equivalent in Naira, but the dollar or the, was not was not, the foreign exchange was not available. And a few, you know, a few other points as well. Now, the question I'd like to ask you, apart from responding to the policy, um, the new policy introduced by CBN is, putting you in a very interesting position. As an economist, as a financial expert, what do you think that the CBN should be doing to manage this so that it's not just a small victory that we celebrate for a week, a few days, and then things go back again to what yeah. they were before, but are sustainable? You know, you talked about the pressure on the foreign, foreign exchange. They brought in, you know, bans on imported products. Yeah. How better can the CBN manage this problem? Okay, like I said before, <clears throat> prior to 2016, June, when we um, saw the draft of the decisions they had taken. Yeah. Nothing was happening. We were struggling through, you know, from month to month, and the pressure was getting really high and causing um, inflationary pressure. Now, when we got to June 2016, CBN finally realized that, okay, we need to do something about this. Otherwise, I mean, the economy is just going to shut down. Mm. Most of our, our products in Nigeria are imported, so we're exposed to imported inflation. What do we do? They came out with the policy last year. I liked the policy. I had a look at the policy paper. It made sense. Liberalize the market. Allow forces of demand and supplies to set the prices. So everyone who wants to buy and sell dollar comes to one pool. So it's the interbank market. So the issue of people not having enough supply at the interbank market would not be there. Because the reason people go, people, for instance, remittances from abroad, when people send money in from abroad for whatever reason, you find out that they go to the black market to change that money because it provides a premium yes. over what the interbank market will give you. But if you liberalize the market, it means the prices are set by the flows. If there is enough flow of dollars into the market, prices will fall. If the, if the um, flows reduce a little bit, 
prices would inflated. begin to, yes. And then in, the CBN says they would intervene when it's necessary. So we see that the, the um, flows are reducing over a prolonged period. The CBN can now come in and do what they're doing now and sort of stabilize the market again because price stability is one of the functions of the CBN. But last year, we realized that it wasn't really, you know, on paper it looked good, but the implementation challenges is what um, we were all experiencing. So I would say go back to June 2016. Those modalities that you've put down, it's okay. So Just it. implement it. And then yeah. let's move on from this problem of FX challenges so that we can attract enough FDIs and FPIs. That helps to boost reserves too. Because okay. remember, reserves... Uh, is not only from oil. It's just oil is just the major, the major. Um, so, um, contributor yeah. to reserves. You also have FPI flows, FDIs. Mm. Allow those monies come back in. Nobody is going to bring their money into this environment when they are unsure of what the exchange rate will be like if they want to leave. But I think this past few days has boosted investor confidence. Yeah, but will you bring your money exactly in because people of are going to watch and see what's happening before we let you go? Finally, I think I should ask you. With regards to manufacturing, we know that there was a preferential treatment yeah. with regards to provision of 60% of the FX to manufacturers, yeah. and now they're trying to eliminate that's gone. Yes. that. Do you think that's in favor? Is, is that good for us? One, because we know that our manufacturing sector needs mm, FX, a lot badly. of work. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. they complain that a lot of the things they need to manufacture, they don't have foreign exchange for. That's yeah. one. Then secondly, with regards to individuals, this, this is good for individuals, right? Because they yes. say that retailers can now access FX with, I think, 20% much more than they would get at the interbank. Yeah, um, a markup of not more than 20%. Exactly, not more than 20%. This is, is this good for us as well? And should we be excited? So it's two in one. Okay. The manufacturers... The and then elimination for us, of the, the end exactly. users. Okay. I would say that for the issue of manufacturers, right, I am not in support of having different rates for different people. This same situation we're facing now, Egypt went through it. I actually went through a document on how FX management was done in Egypt. This person has this rate here. This one has this rate here. And so many people, or oh, airlines, they complain, or oh, we don't have access to the... You, you create a different rate for airlines. You create a... What that encourages is arbitrage. When people know that, okay, for instance, you have else's letters of credit, and you say, okay, I need $100,000, for instance, to import XYZ for manufacturers, I need. Mm -hmm. If the cost of manufacturing is so high, in order to still make those margins, some of that dollar can find its way to the parallel market. Okay. And they will just sit down and sell some of that. I was going to say, make spread. I'm telling you. So, um, I mean, all these, you know, these rates today, this sector today, pilgrimage people have yes, one rate. Yeah. Everybody has different, different. Those things So, if I'm a pilgrim, because I know I've had people arbitrage. approach, I'll just collect as much and then Simple sell as some. And I'll also those some 41 packets. people, those 41 um, items that, that were excluded. Yes. You know, for me, all these things heat up the system unnecessarily. Just liberalize mm. that market. Allow the forces of demand and supply to set the prices. Okay. If there is a, a little bit of pressure, you can mm. intervene. All right. Then finally, do we, should we be excited? Yeah, for me, at least I have access <laughs> to this as well. I want to travel. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. A lot of people are going to do a lot of panic buying right now, as much as possible, because they feel that bills that need to be paid, they'll make sure they pay them off quickly, just in case it's, it's, it's gets general. worse. Exactly, yeah. it gets worse. But thank you so much for joining us. If welcome. people wanted to follow you um, on, your, on your social media handles to ask you oh. questions you know, oh, they that can. they couldn't possibly ask you on the show, Okay, it's you? at IB Prince. Okay. So it's fine. You can follow me. Ask at me anything I'll answer. Yeah. We look towards we look to having you again. Yes. There's so much that we need to talk about. And we're sure that we'll see some changes again and we'll bring you back. That's fine. Thank you so much for joining us. Wonderful, You're thank welcome. you. We're going to break right now. When we come back, it'll be time for sports with Nandi Ekubado. All right, you're welcome back. It's the final lap for today's show on Hello Nigeria. If you're just tuning in, you've missed a lot, but you can still get a, a little with sports and Namdi. Yes, a lot happened over the weekend, but today we'll be concentrating on boxing and, of course, the English Football League. Namdi. All the Manu fans on the set, 
Let me hear you say, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 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 Tell us about that. Uh-huh. I'm not saying anything. Uh-huh. Whatever, we won. So Southampton <laughs> was, well, not trash. To it wasn't fair. trash. It was three, three to two, yes. Score. United, United were lucky at the end of the Whatever, day. Whatever, we won. Three goals to two, but they had experienced players to, you know, to help it. Mm. Well, obviously, you have Zlatan Ibrahimovic in the mix, then mm. uh, Jesse Lingard, who has scored at, at three finals in the Wembley, in the Wembley Stadium. Um, as disappointing as you can say United are, yes. in 10 months they've won three trophies. Now that's that's big. That's you won't really bad. you won't really know. Please, how is Arsenal now done in ten months? That's not that good. At least that's not. I just said that. As now played in the Champions League, United <laughs> are not, are not there. It, so United are not there, <laughs> and, and that's that's a whole lot of money. But yes, it was it, it was a fantastic performance. Latan got the first goal, uh, courtesy a free kick. Jesse Lingard got the second. It was two 0 at the point before uh, Manolo Gabbiadini scored two goals late in the first half, early in the second half. Then this man. Obviously, uh, got uh, the winning goal for Manchester United, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic. Now, let's talk about Southampton a little bit. I yeah. mean, playing against Manchester United, we, you know, 3-2 um, is not a bad score at all. No, now, not. how did Southampton, you know, how, what made them lose? Why did they, did they, they have was it an won easy if they had, yeah, defeat? was it an easy defeat? Well, uh, for United, I would say what really gave United a victory is the fact that uh, they had the players to do that. Okay. You know, when you have experienced players, Zlatan. Pogba, uh, Martial, you know, these players can win you games individually. But Southampton. For Southampton, it's it's a group effort. If the team isn't playing, then no individual, you know, can break away to oh. do that. So it was difficult for them. I can say Southampton played for 80 minutes. United played for only 10. Wow. And in, in between those 80 minutes, United scored two goals. Then when United play for, played for that last 10 minutes, they got the final goal. Yeah. Now that's when you have that individual brilliance. And, so you know, basically, should. United had an upper hand in this match because yes, of the they did. individuals. Yes, well, the individuals the that were there. But I think Southampton played better than okay. United. Yeah, on the that day. I was trying to get to that. Yes. I, they, they passed, played better. They played but better, for them to better. have scored two goals against United, it's not, it's not they definitely they played brought way their, better. Brought their, um, yeah. game United on. were lucky, I'll say that. Are we coming back to Nigeria yet? Um, no, not yet. I'm okay. still talking about the. Let's look at the boxing. Now we have a very important yes. match in April. Manny Pacquiao has picked his opponent. I remember he went Bye on Twitter. social media. <laughs> yes, and asked his fans that you know who should he fight next, and they picked American. Was yes. he? So it was the Twitter, his Twitter fans that picked him. Yeah, opponent. they did. They did pick that uh, American. That's him. Uh, his former uh, training partner. And uh, it, this this fight had been long coming. Uh, what the, are the chances for both of them? Uh, American is thirty. Uh, Pacquiao is uh, 38. 38. Okay, wow. 38 is getting close to 40. So the younger you are, the better? Uh, the younger you obviously, the younger you are, the better. I mean, you could see Anthony Joshua. He's yeah. knocking people out in, in less <laughs> than six rounds, you know, and, and that's that's because his age is good. He's going to face a 40-year-old in uh, Vladimir Klitschko, by the way. Uh, that's for the heavyweights. This is for the welterweight. Um, you would easily go for um, a Pacquiao, though he, he retired and bounced back, beating Jesse Vargas. For American, he made a very huge mistake. He stepped up his, his weight category, went to fight uh, Ca Canelo, and he got beat, like, black and blue. Oh dear. And so, uh, do we think that after this, Pacquiao will officially resign? I don't retire? think so. He, he retired, and he missed the sport. I don't mm. know how you'd miss battering, but he missed right. the sport anyway, and uh, he came back. This time, he's going to fight against uh, American. This is tough. If you talk about the fight of the century, and that's... Uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. You'll All talk right. about this next. Okay, All right. fantastic. I wanted to ask you about CAF, but I, I think we don't have enough time for that. We don't too. like Isa Hayato. Right. You don't like Isa Hayato. Like I think that's the summary yeah. of, the pro, of the matter. But the Nigerians you do not like in CAF like him. All right. Yeah, I don't okay. like him. Yeah, All right. Like him. Moving on to today in history <laughs> before we call it an afternoon on this lovely, beautiful Monday, the 27th of February. We say today in history in 1980. Robert Mugabe Zanu PF wins elections in Zimbabwe mm. and have decided to not Never allow to leave anybody power experience. to stay there as if it is his birthright. He and the his same. So that is roughly 37 years ago. He and his wife Grace ago. Mugabe have decided 33 to years ago, their, sorry. their inheritance. They yeah. will wheel out Zimbabwe when they are finally ready to go. 37 years ago, actually. They have been there for 30, almost 40 years. Some I wasn't even born 37 years ago. <laughs> all right, birthdays today. Happy birthday to all those who are celebrating. If it's your birthday, we're saying a big, big happy birthday to you. We, you're share, you share your birthday with Timothy Spall, who is a British character actor who is best known for his role as Warm Tail in the Harry Potter film. So if you're a Harry Potter um, enthusiast, then of course you would know him. Someone's nodding his head. Yes, Harry Potter. <laughs> we all like Harry Potter. I had to watch the whole um, eight series of Harry Potter. I didn't watch the whole that of them, but I read it. Uh, but I know that Ayo did not like Harry Potter because it's all about witchcraft. And after reading Harry Potter, you want to be a witch. Uh, 
okay. it made witchcraft very <laughs> glamour. I don't want to be a witch. <laughs> all right, thank you very much for joining us. We've had a very fantastic show, and for all of you who've stayed tuned, we promise you tomorrow will be an even more amazing show. Remember, you can follow us on social media. Follow Aya at Aya Thompson 7 on Twitter and Aya Thompson on Instagram. You can follow Nandi at Ekubadun. Follow yours truly at Oliver Modigbenga at Captain Sankara. In case you're wondering where he went to, he's on leave. He'll be away for a couple of days. <laughs> and you can follow IB at IB Prince Will on Twitter. IB and Prince. IB Prince on Twitter. And then ask her whatever questions you have. Tomorrow is Health Tuesday. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.